In the last video, you learned about covalent bonding. And you should recall that a covalent bond is the attraction that results when two atoms share valence electrons. And at the very end, I kind of indicated that there's a couple different types of covalent bonds depending on the nature of that sharing. So to think about sharing of covalent uh, of valence electrons, I want you to look at this two ways. I want to begin with Sesame Street chemistry. Everybody knows Sesame Street. If we have two kids on Sesame Street who are asked to share some cookies, two kids, four cookies, how are they going to share? Well, it's Sesame Street. They're going to share them equally. Each kid's going to get two cookies. In the case of oxygen gas, two oxygen atoms share two pairs of valence electrons, and they share them equally. The result of this equal sharing of electrons is what's called a nonpolar covalent bond. This means the covalent bond isn't simply the result of sharing, but of equal sharing. And what I mean by equal sharing is each of the two atoms involved, each of the nuclei involved, gets equal time with the shared electrons. That's all it means. Now let's think about kindergarten chemistry. We go into a kindergarten classroom. We're not going to find a bunch of kids like we would find on Sesame Street where they all share equally. Some kids aren't going to share well with others. And let's be frank, when we say two kids or two grown-ups for that matter don't share well with others, we mean they're a hog. So if we give two kids in a kindergarten class four cookies and say share them, there's every possibility one kid will take three and the other will get one. And he shared. Let's look at the water molecule from the last video. In this case, oxygen is an electron hog. It doesn't share equally with the hydrogens. What that means is that the two pairs of shared electrons, oxygen, remember, is sharing a pair of electrons with one hydrogen and a pair with the other hydrogen. Oxygen is holding those electrons more of the time, meaning the electrons spend more of their time near oxygen and less near hydrogen. The result of this is this situation most of the time. That the oxygen atom has within its nucleus eight protons, but most of the time it's surrounded by 10 electrons. The hydrogen atoms have within their nuclei each one proton and are really surrounded by no electrons most of the time. Now, if you do the math here, there are still 10 electrons and 10 protons in this molecule. It's still as a whole electrically neutral. But the oxygen side, more often than not, is slightly negative. The hydrogen side is slightly positive. Now these aren't permanent, so I say slightly. Oxygen has those electrons most of the time, but there are moments when they are around hydrogen. And in those moments, oxygen doesn't have eight, electron, uh, eight protons and 10 electrons. The concept of partial charge in chemistry refers to a weak, what's called a partial integer electrical charge that results in an electrically neutral particle from asymmetric electron distribution. What we're really saying here is it's a charge, it's a positive or a negative, but it's weaker than a full charge like we would see in an ion, and it's a result of the electrons spending more time in one particular location than another. So if we look at our water molecule, this is how we represent partial charge. Lowercase Greek delta indicates a partial charge. The oxygen side tends to have more electrons most of the time, so it's a partial negative, and the hydrogen sides tend to have no electrons most of the time, so a partial positive. Polarity refers to any condition in which things are diametrically opposite. In this case, opposite charge on opposite sides of the molecule. Negative on one side, positive on the other. This is what we call polar covalent bonding. Covalent bonding that results from unequal valence electron sharing. Because the oxygens hog the electrons, they spend more time with the oxygen and less with the hydrogens. Oxygen carries a partial negative charge. The hydrogens carry a partial positive charge. And the result is polarity in the molecule that comes from the bond being polar covalent. So here we have, as a reminder, oxygen on the left, I'm sorry, water on the left, which is a polar covalent bonding situation and the oxygen gas molecule on the right, which is nonpolar covalent bonding. Remember, nonpolar covalent bonds are the result of covalent bonding involving equal electron sharing. Polar covalent bond is what results from unequal valence electron sharing. And in a future video, we'll talk about two things. The next video, we'll talk about why this difference between polar and nonpolar matters, hint, it involves water. 
and in the video after that we'll talk about how do you tell whether a molecule is polar or nonpolar.